Previously on Michael Hayes. The Attorney General is uh, coming to New York. Ah, the AG herself. Don't piss her off. This is no joke, Michael. We're getting the idea that your boss does not know how to be a team player. We? Did I say we? Did you find out exactly when your crazy brothers... We're going to process Danny out tomorrow. I won't take him back. Your dad's coming home tomorrow. It'll be good to see him, won't it? My dad doesn't fish. I won't be staying at Michael's anymore. Danny, are you in trouble? You gotta go away for a while. But I don't want you to. But Uncle Michael is going to take care of everything. Okay, Hayes, and when the band stops playing, that's your cue. You come to the microphone. Get the lead out, Hayes. You step to the microphone. Come on now, Hayes. Your uncle has come all the way out here to Brooklyn just to hear you rehearse. Now make him proud. <clears throat> Fellow members of the fourth grade class of Our Lady of Sorrows, today we honor our country, our flag, and our present. The president I chose, Abraham Lincoln. Over 130 years ago, President Lincoln said, he said, we were engaged in a great civil war. Give me the money! Hurry up! Give me the money, man, come on! The brave men who struggled here. Hey, go, hey, go, hurry up! The world will little note, nor long remember what we say, but it can never forget what they did. It is rather for us to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that we here have a resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. Thanks for calling. What do you got? Stick-up gun, Ron. Responding officer Higgins is dead, also one customer. Three others are injured. The gun used was an MP561. The gun you and ATF have been tracking, that's why we called. Good you did. Five of those have shown up at crime scenes, other cities around the country. We've been on the alert. So far, all we got is two big crimes, two big criminals. Yeah? What a big-time cannon. Yeah, that's it. Apparently, the shooter froze on the trigger, sprayed everything in sight. Higgins' jugular got sliced by some flying glass. You got the perps? Morell brothers. And as was the shooter, he got hit pretty bad. Little brother Tyus backed him up. Might want to talk to him? Go ahead, we already got their confessions. Over there. Is this Burrell in there? No. Are you family? He didn't make it. Where's the brother? First patrol car around the corner. Thanks. Nice, Burrell. How old are you, Tyus? Thirteen. Thirteen. What are you doing robbing stores with machine guns? I was just pulling the door open, like any said for me to do. You're a lucky guy, Tyus. Two years old, you'd be looking at the death penalty. We didn't mean to hurt nobody. Do you think that gun was a toy? <laughs> we just thought it scared everyone. Yeah, well, it did a little more than that, didn't it? You be going to Spofford for a while. 
be a chance to get your priorities straightened out. Is Ennis dead? Yeah. Where'd you get that gun from, Dias? Some guy. A friend? I don't know. He hangs around the gas station. I heard somebody call him Blade. Clarence Blade Jenks, one prior for videotape piracy. That's it. He's all yours. Thank you. Yo, this is persecution, man. The other detective checked out what I said. They know I ain't lying. Relax, Clarence. Well, Nobody is connecting you to the shooting. Well, that's right. I was at the club, you know, having a corvasse and coke. <laughs> Conversating. Must have been 20 people saw me there. See, the problem is, is that the kid that did the robbery said you sold him the weapon. No, sir. He identified you in a photo array. No, sir. Weapons trafficking is a federal crime. Ten years per count in a federal penitentiary. No getting out after 22 months. Is that clear? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a legitimate businessman. Hey, you ever been in a Surge Right laundromat on Lennox? I own 15% of that. Why do they call you the Blade? <laughs> you, know, you know, man, it's just a name. Seems to me that it would indicate someone who knows an opportunity when they see one. Would that be accurate? What do you want? Everything you got. <laughs> what do I get? If you give me the weapon smuggler, I'll tell the judge you were helpful. You know, I think Clarence wants that 10 years. Seems like it. Clarence, who do you think we are? You're the man with the badge. No, not exactly. We work for the federal government. Because of the specific nature of the weapon you sold, they brought us in. Now, because of the specific nature of my job, I can assure you that it is better that we end up friends. So it's up to you. I'd rather be your friend. <clears throat> All right. There's this dude. White guy. Likes to hang out with the brothers. Got a little taste for brown sugar, you know what I'm saying? He sold you the weapons? Hey, hey one gun. All right, I wouldn't call it buying. I took it as payment because the dude was looking for some blow. And um, you know, my, my cousin's friend had, had gotten clean and needed a little to unload, you know. And, and, and it's this white dude, Constantine. He, he's going through the club, seeing where you can cop, only he's a little light on the cash money. Wants to swap for the rifle. What's Constantine's last name? All I know was Constantine. The dude talks like Dolph Lundgren or something. You think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? Hmm. Now we're friends. Like I said, dude ain't even American. It's hard to tell what he'll do, you know what I'm saying? Just watch the entrance, all right? I was telling him once about that little coyote cartoon. You know that little beep beep dude? He don't know what I'm talking about. What you mean beep beep? You know, <laughs> this shows he ain't American. Just chill and watch the entrance, OK? If I don't get Constantine, you don't get a deal. You understand?
Your sister Ebony living on 135th Street. Latasha. She fun. Clarence. No, I'm just saying, he don't show up here. Maybe we check out Latasha's. What about that dude then? Yeah. That's Constantine. How you know what's that? Give me a hand, man. That's the dude. Give me a hand. Hey, hey. Hey, we got a deal, right? I feel you, bro. I give you what you wanted. Constantine, yo, Matty Diaz, he used to go with Latasha's cousin. Come here, man, how's Latasha doing? I don't know you. I want, I want to talk to you for a second, come on, man. I'm a U.S. Marshal, sir. You need to come with me. I am immune. You want to play like that? You're under arrest. Listen to what I'm saying. I am immune. Turn around and put your hands on your head. I'm a diplomat. Listen, you're coming with me, you understand? No. You cannot arrest me. Come on, go. Come with me. Go! 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 Where you are, this your ass is bulletproof. Okay, okay. Get him away! <laughs> You're violating international law. Party's yeah. over. Let's go. His name is Konstantin Belisov. He's claiming diplomatic immunity as an attache for the Paturin Consul. Paturin Consulus? Hmm, any other run-ins with the law? Nothing. All he seems to be known for is for a fondness of nightclubbing and African-American women. Strebin from State is waiting in the conference room. I didn't call him. That was fast. Mr. Strebin? Michael Hayes. Mr. Hayes, thank you for seeing me. That's John Manning. Mr. Manning, I won't take much of your time. I understand you have a Mr. Velisov in custody. Mr. Velisov holds valid diplomatic credentials. He's a deputy attache. Petrura? has been a country for, what, 10 or 11 minutes? Minutes or centuries, Mr. Hayes. His immunity is equally valid. You have to release him immediately. <laughs> I take it that this is not about parking tickets. No. We have a witness who has implicated Mr. Velisov in federal firearms violations. He is selling assault weapons to teenagers. I'm sure you've seen the story. Yes. What happened yesterday was a tragedy. And if Mr. Velisov were even indirectly involved, he deserves the harshest condemnation. But if I pursue this, do I have the State Department's backing? As long as you don't detain, interrogate, or indict him. What if I want to waive his immunity? That's highly unlikely. I understand that, but how do I do it? We would petition the consulate, have them arrange a meeting with the ambassador. Let's do that. If he agrees to meet with us, they will consider our request and then politely tell us they will handle it. Which means what? Once in a great while, they'll send the offender home. Hmm, not very satisfying. I'd be the first to agree it's an imperfect system, Mr. Hayes. But I have, we have colleagues who've been arrested for walking down some foreign street with their shirt sleeves rolled up. If letting one man go protects them... This man is a gun runner. Then call it a lousy system, but it's the way it is. I want to see the ambassador. You're in luck, he's in town, but you're wasting your time. I've made a career of it. I'm sure you have employees like Constantine, Mr. Hayes. On the contrary, Mr. Ambassador, I don't employ gun runners. No, no, what I mean is people in the diplomatic corps. Some of them because they are well qualified and have a passion for their work. Others have an uncle, a lover, a business partner. Mr. Velisov falls into the latter category. Regrettably, I am stuck with him. Mr. Ambassador, this is a serious charge. I understand. I abhor guns. If it were up to me, all guns would be banned. Until that happens. Would you be willing to waive Mr. Velisov's immunity? I think you know the answer to that, Mr. Strebin. Immunity is the cornerstone of diplomacy. Mr. Ambassador, that is one of Mr. Velisov's victims, his wife and child. Victim? Mr. Velisov shot no one? Nobody provided the weapon for the killer. You have no proof? We have an eyewitness. Yes. One Clarence Jenks, a felon. Mm -hmm. I believe you call this uh, a jacket. 
My training is in linguistics. I love these idiomatic expressions. But uh, Jenks strikes me as a questionable character. My whole life is about questionable characters. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. You can petition your president. Tell him this man is putting military weapons into the hands of children. Our president will not be moved by the words of Clarence Jenks. Thank you very much. You're free to go. I'm waiting for an apology. Beat it, will you? Before democratization, my country had neo-Stalinist secret police. They would drag innocent people from their cars and their houses and no one would see them again. Nobody had rights. Now we're free. And America terrorizes citizens with secret police. I'm not going anywhere until I get an apology. Leave now, or I'm going to throw you out the window. It's up to you. Thank you for your promptness with the papers. Mm -hmm. I'll do my best to see the villas not sent home. We tried, Mr. Hayes. It went pretty much the way I thought it would. Yes, let's see what happens. Mr. Hayes, I want you to know I appreciate what you were trying to do about guns in the hands of children. Right. Investigator Diaz, Mr. Strebin from the State Department. Mr. Diaz. How are you? Dilla research. It turns out a Petunian diplomat in Washington was turned over for prosecution about 16 months ago. What were the charges? Art forgery. It turns out the guy did a pretty mean Jackson Pollock. So does my kid. Art forgery over gun smuggling. He got lucky. Trust me. Mm, sounds like it. Gentlemen. Take care. Fellow South girlfriend. I'm chasing him. I'm not done on this. Oh, I'm on this one. Danny did this? He got halfway through the albums, too. Why? I don't know. He won't talk to me about his dad. Did you two talk about him by any chance? Yeah. Yeah, I told him that his dad was a spy for the government on a secret mission. Oh, I know. But, well, I mean, how else am I going to explain the witness protection program to a 10-year-old kid? I know, I know. But <sighs> he's obviously upset about something. Right? Mm -hmm. He needs to know the truth. He, he deserves to hear it from you, Michael. Right? Yeah. Maybe you're right. Look, he's coming here tomorrow night. You offer it. It's my late night at the bar. Okay. I think you're right. I'll talk to him. Heating up. Velasov's girlfriend, mm -hmm. Latasha Meadows. Making $400 a week as a hostess at this club. Since meeting Constantine, she's living in a $2,000 a month Riverview apartment. And that's a boost. Do we have her? We can get her. Mr. Mr. Strebin. I don't want to interrupt. Uh, your secretary said you'd be No, here. sit down. Thank you. When Mr. Diaz, Mr. Diaz suggested that the Pachurans had waived immunity on the forger, it stuck in my mind. It seemed odd. And frankly, I thought it untrue, no offense. So I checked into it. I shouldn't have. There's no way that's within my purview. Go ahead. I think I may have found out why Kazad was so uncooperative in our case. It turns out that Belasov's father and Kazad are old friends. They were both jailed by the communists when they were student dissidents. Shared a cell for 10 years. So he's protecting the son of an old friend. Sounds like we don't have a shot. Maybe we do. Belasov's father is not only Kazad's friend, he's also the opposition candidate for president. Now, to my mind, the incumbent would like nothing better than to have his opponent's son labeled criminal. So we go around Kazad straight to the president. We may not have to. Kazan works for the president. That's only so far he'll go in protecting Velasov. Do you have anything more than Clarence Jenks' testimony? One more way to talk to Velasov's girlfriend now. You're suggesting we continue with the case? I'm suggesting that if Kazan sees the evidence is strong enough, he'll cave. Friend or no friend. 
He's a career diplomat, like myself. We're not famous for risking our jobs. And if he doesn't cave? Then we talk about an end run. Mr. Hayes, hmm. I'm 100% out of policy here. I hope it's been helpful. Natasha Meadows? Uh-huh. I'm Eduardo Diaz. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I want to talk to you about Constantine Belsa. I've got nothing to say. Do you know he was arrested for arms trading? Well, that's what you tell me. But I know he's a diplomat who can't be arrested. Yeah, that's right. We had to let him go, and he'd probably go back to Pachura. And we'll have to settle for U.S. citizens who might be involved, like his girlfriend. I don't know nothing about his business. You mind if we talk inside? So you met Mr. Velasov down at the club, huh? That's right. You pay for this place? No. You ever seen him with machine guns, automatic weapons, anything like that? No. You ever talk about guns, importing them, selling them? He talked about me. I can believe that. So if he's not paying for this place, what are you doing with him? There's not much to look at. I should be with a brother? No, brothers are jerks, too. I'm just saying. My personal business is my personal business. You got a storage locker? No. Quick store storage. Looks like a bill addressed to you. I have some furniture out there. Some of my old ratty furniture. Where's the locker? Jersey. Long Island. How about you and I take a ride out there and look around? Hell no. Natasha, chances are that your boyfriend is going home, leaving. So whatever good thing the two of you got going on is coming to an end. Now I got a 17-year-old black boy wearing a toe tag and his 13-year-old brother struggling to hold on to what's left of his life. How long are we gonna let people like your boyfriend put guns in the hands of our children? It's time we took some responsibility for our own. I don't know where the storage locker is. Constantine found it and he said that I can put some of my stuff in it. He had the bills in here, I don't know why. He just told me to give it to him every month. Where's the bull taps pockets of all the keys, but it never happens. The stuff from my old apartment, just like I told you. Who picked up the furniture? Constantine and some other guys. Other guys from the consulate? I didn't recognize them. End tables? The only thing I know about is the stuff from my old apartment. Let me borrow a screwdriver from you there, buddy. Yeah. Must have been a pretty rough neighborhood. Look, like I told you before, I don't know where those crates came from. Ignorance is not a defense. I took him down there. Why would I take him down there if I had something to hide? You took me down there because I found the bill. You got to give us something. Natasha, do you think Constantine appreciates you? You're about to go to jail for him. Do you think he cares? What do you call that nail job there? I don't know. Sparkly moons. You think she can get that done in the joint? I doubt it. What do you want me to give you? I need you to connect Constantine to these guns. Somebody is going to jail. You choose. I was with him when he delivered some. So that's something. So I don't go to jail, right? We need to know when, where, and who. We can get in to see the ambassador on Friday. Oh, good. Good. I want to add Latasha Meadows to that meeting. I'll look into it. Where is she? We've got her at a safe house. Is she credible? She was there when Velasov sold weapons to Jenks. Good. Great. I filled in my supervisor. He'd like me to debrief Latasha, so if you'll just tell me where you've got her. For what reason? Well, if she knows what Velasov was doing, she may have information on other areas of interest involving Pachurian affairs. 
Where do we have her? She's in a room at the Hotel Manchester. Okay. On the condition that you keep us informed. Will do. Be at that debriefing. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Caden! Aren't you supposed to be upstairs babysitting Natasha? Yeah, but I thought that you guys... I'm supposed were... to be strapping here while he talks. So where, where the hell are you going? Well, back to the office. Those other guys took it back to D.C. What guys? Well, they said that you knew. What guys? Look, two guys came to the door, showed me legitimate State Department credentials. They said that the, the interrogation was being transferred to headquarters in Washington. And you believe them? They said Mr. Hayes okayed it. They knew my boss's name, all the procedures, code sequences. What am I supposed to do? Is he in here? I'm sorry, you can't go in there, sir. Mr. Hayes, if you wanted to see me, you need to avoid yourself. Where's my witness? I don't know. When I told my boss about the meeting with Latasha, he said he'd handle it himself. He said he'd contact you. Well, it slipped his mind. So get him on the phone and find my witness. I can't. The operation is extinct. It is a mistake to play with me. So find my witness. You're looking for truth, Mr. Hayes. This is the truth. I do the very best I can. I do not make policy. At the end of the day, I go home and talk I to my me. kids. Talk to me, Strebin. They found out I give you additional information. They were not happy. How? How did they find that out? Please, you're putting me in a very difficult position. You don't like it, do you? What do you want from me? I helped you. I want my witness. I can't give her to you. And now, I would like you to leave. I'll be back. Inform Lindsay that we cannot count on Streben and that she's to proceed. Right, I'll call her later. Working on the homework. Yeah. What do you got? Just, um, history junk. History junk? What kind of Abe Lincoln are you? I'm not Abe Lincoln. No, but you play him on TV. Looking good. Looking good. You okay? I thought that the point of these sleepovers was for us to talk to each other. You lied to me. Kid said something to me today at recess. What'd he say? Jimmy Morelli thinks he knows everything because his father's a cop. Well, what did he say to you? Something about my dad. Why did you tell me my dad was on a secret mission? You lied to me, Uncle Mike. Well? Jimmy Morelli said that my dad was a thief and a rat. I told him he was a spy like you told me, and everybody just laughed. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it sounds like that you're ready to hear the truth about it. You're right. Your dad was not on a secret mission. Your dad committed some crimes in the past, and he put himself in what's called a witness protection program to make it right with the government. So you're right. But the important thing is the last time I saw him, he told me to tell you that he loved you very much and that every day he was going to be gone, he was going to miss you. That's what happened. We need to make a deal. From now on, every time you and I speak, we speak the truth to each other. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to speak to this guy Morelli's father? That's okay. I can handle Jimmy Morelli. Michael, there's still no word from the State Department. They're not returning any of our calls. You talk to Strevin? Can't find him anywhere. Okay, call my friend, the Attorney General, and tell her the State Department stole my witness. Right. 
Michael, Lindsay's in your office. She's found something. Okay. What do we got? The topic is U.S. Petura relations. The principal source of income in Petura is handmade wooden dolls and hemp sandals. The GMP is about what Mel Gibson makes for one movie. Hence, Vel is all selling weapons. But their cash flow situation may change. Why? Have you ever heard of a Voli? No. It's a consortium of eight U.S. oil companies. They want to build an oil pipeline from the Caspian Sea to the Mediterranean. Uh, they're offering a lot of money for the land use rights, but their president doesn't want it because he feels that it infringes on their sovereignty. Which would make him a very unpopular incumbent. Obviously, the oil companies are going to back the opposing candidate, Belisov's father. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Just like we did with the Shah 50 years ago. Trade the people's interests with oil. That was about oil, too, wasn't it? I want to dig into this consortium. Well, let me see if I can find a name. Give me a minute, will you? Yeah. Mr. Strebin. Joan, my name, I, uh... That's right, come on in. Come on in. I'm going to lose my job, you know. Talking to you is going to cost me my job. I haven't compromised you. I don't even know why I'm here. We know about the pipeline. They don't do these things on a whim, you know. The pipeline will help a bowler, which will create jobs, American jobs. Is there something you need to tell me? They're sending her to Paris. Latasha Meadows. They said she could go anywhere in the world she wanted. She chose Paris. When did she go? I had to call in favors, make some people think I needed to know. Mm -hmm. Her flight leaves sometime this afternoon. The good news is I got that information. The bad news is that they booked her on 10 separate flights under five separate names. You made the right decision. John, find me a duty judge. I need a court order to prevent a takeoff and find me Eddie. OK. All I did was answer the phone. I was the guy who took your call. Now I'm paying for it with my career. Let me protect you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hayes, but you're either very naive or have an inflated sense of your own capability. Judge, you got a minute? I'll be right back. Natasha Meadows is crucial to my investigation. I know, I know. When you told me the State Department snatched you, is this State little cloak and They have their own agenda, but as an officer of the court. Uh, Michael, are you going to tell me my no, duty sir, here? No, sir, but I need this lady. Well, then you shouldn't have let her slip away, should you, Michael? No court order. I'm duty with a weapon provided by this guy, Bellis. Hayes, are you that listening to me? That gun, Your Honor, cost less than the lunch you just bought that lady, so please, give me a break. Please. You owe me, Hayes. I owe everybody an honor. Gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We will be delaying takeoff for a few minutes due to a security procedure. Uh, nothing to worry about. We will resume departure shortly. Merci. Don't see who I'm looking for. Maybe if you just give me a name. Merci beaucoup, I'm sure, but the uh, chances of her using a real name are 100 to 1. Not here. Thank you. not on the plane, man. I checked every flight. She's here somewhere. I know it. Where are you? I'm at the gate. Just stay put. I got a hunch or two where she might be. They just wouldn't give up. Stay put. I'm coming right at you. Yeah. Bingo, I found her. A couple monkeys from state got her in the room. They won't let anybody near us. That's a security thing. I'm secure. My name is Michael Hayes. I'm here to retrieve my witness, Latasha Meadows. What? Are you nuts? You know who you're dealing with? Yeah, Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb. Hey, take a walk, fool. Edward? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you out of your mind? Listen to me. I'm going to ask you one more time. I want my witness. Look, you can ask me a thousand times. She's getting on that plane. Shoot him. What? OK, all right, all right. Take it easy. Calm down. Go ahead, take her. No! Oh. Oh. What the hell did you do that for? That's for making me wait. Let's go. There you go. Thank you. Now, you need to understand that I am not charging you with a crime. I haven't done anything. 
Okay, now you were willing to cooperate. I assume you still are. Those guys said you were dropping the case, letting Constantine go. That's not true, Latasha. I need you to tell the ambassador everything you know about Velasov and these guns. Give me a minute. The guy out here wants to see you. He's flashing some pretty heavy credentials. Are we in it now? <laughs> One minute. He's from state. Yes, John. Michael, this is Undersecretary Julian Curtis. Hi, Julian. I don't think you understand the gravity. You know what? I don't mean to stop you, but I have something going on in there, so we need to be quick. Okay. Let her go. Well, it's a little late for that. You leave me no other option. This is a temporary restraining order prohibiting you from any further detention of this witness until there can be a full hearing. Is there a court date set yet? Tomorrow, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. tomorrow. See you then. File that for me, Lee John. This guy is finished. What do you think, Latasha? I won't go to jail. That's what you said, right? That's right. I guess I don't have a choice. How many guns did Constantine sell to Clarence? I saw him sell three. And did you see him sell to anyone else? Twice to this other guy that I know, and a few times to some kids who hang around the club. Where is the waiver recommendation? waved your immunity. from the cop car. Why did you come up here? I heard your mother wasn't able to visit. She don't want to. So how you doing? Well, food's no good. <laughs> you know, I read the uh, statement you made to the police and I talked to some of the psychologists who interviewed you. That whole convenience store thing, I think you'll Man, it doesn't make no difference now. I just want you to hear it from somebody who doesn't work here, who's not saying it to a hundred other kids. Tyus, when you get out of here, you'll still be young. You'll still have a chance to turn your life around. Doing what? Whatever you want. What do you like? How long before I get out of here? Tyus, you're not listening to me. No matter how long, you'll still be young. How long? Ten to thirteen. Yeah, right. Mr. Hayes, you all right? Am I all right? I don't see how that would be possible. I'm no longer a diplomat. What are you talking about? Doesn't matter. You have enemies, Mr. Hayes, and you've just made yourself small. Welcome to the dollhouse. Look at me. Look where I am at the end of everything. My job was my life, Mr. Hayes. That's up to you. It's not for you, Mr. Hayes. It's not for me, either. No, I certainly thought about it. You don't need that. Oh, don't I? 
You'll watch yourself, Michael. You'll be careful. Be careful of what? This may help you to understand. Don't follow me. What do you say? Jimmy Morelli thinks he knows everything because his father's a cop. Well, what did he say to you? Something about my dad. Why did you tell me my dad was on a secret mission? You lied to me, Uncle Mike. Well? Jimmy Morelli said that my dad was a thief and a rat. Is that the best you can do? I'm waiting. I'll be here. 